I am the God that healeth thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word and healed your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. Again, a wonderful time to share the word of God with you, listeners. The Lord God bless everyone who has tuned in to the Bible Lecture Series on radio. A very good day to all the precious listeners out there. Please send your Bible questions and comments to my email address at BibleLectureSeries at gmail.com. BibleLectureSeries at gmail.com. I prefer email counseling, but you can also reach me by telephone on Fridays from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. at 054-776-3462 or 026-863-9540. Yes, in our last broadcast, we ended at where um, I was explaining to you that it is the ploy of Satan to bring those um, exploding divorce statistics to your face so that you will begin to doubt the word of God at Mark chapter 10 verse 9 that says that what God uh, what therefore God hath joined together let not man put asunder and so we will pick up from there and continue now that verse means that it if it was God who joined their marriage together then no man can break it so what Satan is doing is to show you the high divorce numbers and get you to think that um, and get you to think and to doubt God that why is that God has blessed all these marriages in churches and yet the people are divorcing Satan is trying to get you to to um, pose that question to God and to begin to doubt God you know Um, first of all, who told you that it was God who blessed all those church weddings? And who told you that it was God who joined them together in marriage? By the word of God shall all truth be established. And if you go by the word of God, you'll find out that rather... It was Satan who joined the majority of these marriages together. And no wonder they are falling apart. If God had declared that his children do uh, do not lie, or if God has declared in Zephaniah that we read before that his children do no iniquity and do not therefore divorce, and you see divorces going on, Do you need any special education to discern that those divorces are not of God? Consider these verses. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse uh, 13. Zephaniah 3 13. The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies, neither shall a deceitful tongue be found. In their mouth, for they shall feed and be and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. First John chapter 5, verse 18. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. Now, that verse is very profound. In 1 John, that verse is at 1 John chapter 5, verse 18. The last part says that, And that wicked one toucheth him not. That is a very clear and loud indication to you that 
all these divorces are not of God. Since divorce is of Satan, and the word of God says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 18, that Satan cannot touch the children of God, then it's very clear that these divorces, these divorces are not of God. Now, if it happens that a couple does separate and both of them are true children of God, they will obey the second commandment of God in the word of God as follows. Number one, they should remain separate and unmarried. Number two, they should be reconciled again. Or number three, wait until the other one dies and become free to remarry. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 11. We read, But and if she depart, let her remain unmarried, or be reconciled to her husband, and let not the husband put away his wife. When you look at what Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 19, verse 12, the lesson there is that marriage is not for everyone. Let's look at that again. Matthew chapter 19 verse 12. For there are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother's womb. And there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men. And there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for their kingdom of heaven's sake. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. That was Matthew. Second, even with the children of God, not all children of God are destined for marriage. Why? Because there are some who can receive the laws of marriage and there are some who are not able to do so. Just like with meat, there are some who are able to eat meat while others cannot have meat. There are children of God who drink milk, and other children of God eat strong meat. And so, among the children of God who drink milk, and other children of God um, who eat uh, strong uh, meat, um, there are, it means that there are some who marry, and there are some who do not marry. There are some who marry because they burn, and there are some who do not marry because they can contain. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 9, we read, But if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. Now, the truth is that among all the servants of God in the Bible, it was the unmarried ones who did most for God and for the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Let's look at the proofs thereof. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 34, we read, There is difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord that she may be holy, both in body and in spirit. But she that is married careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 38. It says, So then, he that giveth her in marriage doeth well, but he that giveth her not in marriage doeth better. Let us now look at the lives of servants of God in the Bible to see how they fared, um, to see how they fared, uh, married or unmarried. Number one, when we start from Adam, the truth is that Adam was brought down by his wife. Eve, according to Genesis chapter 3 verse 17, we read, And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, 
and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Then turn with me to 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 14 and we read, And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Number 2. The curse of Jacob came into his family because of Rachel his wife, who stole the idols of her father while absconding with her husband Jacob. Let's look at the verses. Genesis chapter 31 verse 19. And I and Laban went to share his sheep, and Rachel had stolen the images that were her father's. Genesis 31, 32, we read, With whomsoever thou findest thy gods, let him not live before our brethren. Discern thou what is thine with me, and take it to thee. For Jacob knew not that Rachel had stolen them. Genesis chapter 35 verse 19. Now we see the curse of Jacob coming to pass. He put out a curse that whoever stole the idols of Rachel's father should die. He didn't know that his own wife had stolen them. So let's see the consequence of that curse. Genesis 35, 19, And Rachel died and was buried in the way to Ephrath, <clears throat> and was buried in the way to Ephrath, which is Bethlehem. Number three, at the time when God was prophesying to Abraham to give him an heir, Sarah, his wife, was laughing at the prophecies of God. Let's look at that. In Genesis chapter 18, verse 13, we read, And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a shorty bear a child, which am old? Genesis chapter 18, verse 14, Is anything too hard for the Lord? At that time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Genesis chapter 18 verse 15 we read, Then Sarah denied, saying, I laughed not, for she was afraid. And Abraham said, Nay, but thou did laugh. Take note, though, how in this example in Genesis chapter 18, verse 15, Abraham sided with God against Sarah, his wife. In other words, Abraham believed God contrary to the lying of his wife. The lesson here for us is that in a Christian marriage, the word of God is supreme. And if any spouse is going against the word of God in anything, you do not go along like Adam did. Number four, it was Sarah who gave Abraham the evil advice to go into her handmaid, Hagar. And that union produced Ishmael and the Muslims. And that family fight that began in the home of Abraham from Sarah because of those two children, Ishmael and Isaac, is still going on today in all the millions of killings between Christians and Muslims. Let's look at Genesis chapter 16 verse 2. And Sarai said unto Abram, Behold, now the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai. 
Genesis 16, 3, and Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, and her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. Genesis 16:5. And Sarai said unto Abram, My wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid into thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judge between me and thee. Genesis 16:6. 6. But Abram said unto Sarai, Behold, Thy maid is in thy hand, do to her as it pleaseth thee. And when Sarai dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. Genesis 21 9 And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had borne unto Abraham, mocking. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be here with my son, even with Isaac. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of thy bondwoman. In all that Sarah, thy wife, has said unto thee, hearken unto her voice. For in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Then finally, Genesis twenty-one thirteen, And also of the son of the bond woman will I make a nation, because he is thy seed. Number five. When God sent Moses into Egypt and on the way, Zipporah, the wife of Moses, quarreled with him. He sent her back to her father and went alone to do the work of God. Let's look at Exodus chapter 2 verse 21 and then verse 25 and 26. And Moses was content to dwell with the man and he gave Moses Zipporah his daughter. Then Zipporah took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at his feet and said surely a bloody husband art thou to me that was exodus chapter 4 verse 25 let's look at verse 26 so he let him go then she said a bloody husband thou art because of the circumcision now uh, we look at exodus chapter 18 verse 1 when Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, heard of all that God had done for Moses and for Israel, his people, and that the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt, then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took Zipporah, Moses' wife, after he had sent her back. So again, we see that Moses did the same as Abraham by taking the side of God and not his wife. So the lesson that God is teaching us is that when it comes to matters of God, the word of God remains supreme to the marriage. The word of God remains supreme in the marriage and that when one of the spouses wants to go against the word of God, the remaining spouse must not follow him or her to do evil. In fact, that was the very lesson that God was teaching us when God made this statement in Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. Let's look at that. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Number six. We have no record that Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, ever married. 
Number seven, we have no record that Daniel ever married. Number eight, we have no record that Isaiah ever married. Number nine, we have no record that Elijah ever married. Number ten, we have no record that Elisha ever married. Number eleven, we have no record that John the Baptist ever married. Number twelve, we have no record that Jesus Christ ever married. Number thirteen, we have no record that Paul the Apostle ever married. Number fourteen, we have no record that Timothy and Titus and Philemon ever married. Number 15, of all the apostles of Jesus Christ, only Peter is reported to have been married. We see that in Matthew chapter 8 verse 14 and we read, And when Jesus was come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of fever. So, if you look at the whole list of all the servants of God, the greatest achievements were made by unmarried men. That clearly proves that marriage is not for everyone, not even for all children of God. And as for the children of Satan, God appointed no marriage for them. So, the spiritual lesson is that among all the children of God, number one, there are those whose duty it is to produce children and so they marry. And for them, God has made their destiny wife ready. These are the people for whom God has prepared for each man a wife and for each woman a husband. Then number two, there are those who only work for God, and so they do not marry. That was the spiritual lesson that Jesus Christ was teaching us with the parable in Matthew chapter 19, verse 12, when Jesus said, For there are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother's womb, and there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men. And there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it, Jesus said. What Satan has done is to flood the earth with human beings. But the truth is that not all human beings on earth are from God. The fact that the children of Satan look like the children of God, according to the parable of wheat and tares, does not mean that the marriage laws of God should be applied to them. Yes, every human being looks like a human being, but the spiritual reality is that several human beings are dogs and vipers and brute beasts who are meant to be destroyed. Take a look at Psalm 57 verse 4. It says, My soul is among lions, and I lie even among them that are set on fire, even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 12, it says, But these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Let's look at Revelation 21 8. We read, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which, which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Revelation 22.15, for without our dogs and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. 
when such people as described in the above verses, the verses that we just read, when such people are described as such, it is certainly not God who joined them together. And the only reason why you can send away your wife or husband, just as Moses did, is when he or she is preventing you from obeying the word of God. God first taught us that lesson in Genesis chapter 3 verse 17 and Jesus Christ repeated the same lesson in a parable in Matthew chapter 5 verse 30 and we read and if thy right hand offend thee cut it off and cast it from thee for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Your wife or your husband is your right hand. And Jesus Christ is saying that if that person is preventing you from reaching heaven, you cut that person off. You can know if your wife or husband is a child of Satan by his or her disobedience to the word of God. Immediately you see a pattern of disobedience to the word of God in your spouse, you must know right there and then that Satan has entered him or her and that you are now dealing with a child of Satan. You do not have to marry 20 years or even one year before you find out because Jesus Christ gave us the key already in Matthew chapter 12 verse 34 he said O generation of vipers how can ye being evil speak good things for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh let's look at Luke chapter 6 verse 45 we see a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. So there you go. As a child of God, it takes a very short time for you to know if someone is not of God. Because the key that Jesus has given us is that from the abundance of the heart of that person that person will speak and the speaking the words of that person will not align with the word of god then immediately you know you are dealing with the child of satan we will continue this lesson in our next segment this is where we will end for today the lord willing we will have a new bible lesson in our next broadcast you have been listening to dr peter price of the department of french university of education winneba i thank you for tuning in and listening please send your bible questions and comments to my email address at bible lecture series at gmail.com bible lecture series at gmail.com Again, the Ghana telephone numbers are 054-776-3462 or 026-863-9540. Signing off on the Bible Lecture Series, I have been your host and Bible teacher, Dr. Peter Price. Until we meet again, may the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ keep and protect you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Amen. I am the God that healeth thee I am the Lord your healer I sent my word and heal your disease I am the Lord your healer